Hello. Today we'll be talking about Vitess. We'll give you a brief introduction and we'll also give you a few demos that cover some of the new features that we have recently developed. I'm Sugu Sugumaran, I'm co-creator of Vitess and also CTO at PlanetScale. And I'm joined with Deepti Sigiredi, who is lead maintainer at Vitess and also software engineer at PlanetScale. What is Vitess? Vitess was initially uh, developed as a MySQL scaling solution at YouTube, but it has evolved into uh, a cloud native database. Vitess is a CNCF graduated project. It was donated by Google to CNCF in uh, January of 2018 as an incubating project. And it graduated from CNCF in November of 2019. It was the eighth project to graduate from CNCF and the first storage project. What do we mean when we say that Vitus is a cloud native database? Stateless storage in Kubernetes is not an easy problem to solve, but Vitus had a head start because it had been uh, built to work in Borg, which was the precursor to Kubernetes at Google. And because of that, Vitus was ready to run in Kubernetes even before a version 1.0 of Kubernetes. And some of the features in Vitus that made this possible are uh, the way in which Vitus runs MySQL instances in a primary replica configuration so that when uh, there are events like a pod deletion, if Kubernetes decides to kill a pod, then you can fail over to a replica without uh, any disruption to the traffic. The other uh, feature of Vitus that we want to highlight is its scalability. Vitus is massively scalable and we have not so far hit the limits of how much you can, you can scale it uh, as long as you keep adding hardware. There are uh, Vitus implementations which are running literally millions of queries per second uh, with no problems. Vitus is also highly available, and this is a result of the primary replica configuration in which Vitus clusters typically run, and uh, the seamless way in which you can fail over from a primary to a replica in case of uh, unexpected downtime. Vitus is right now MySQL compatible. It runs against uh, any MySQL flavor, community, enterprise, Percona, MariaDB, et cetera. Uh, it uh, does not work with Postgres as of now. Vitus serves millions of queries per second in production at various uh, companies. Some of the biggest users of Vitus are uh, JD.com and Slack, and they uh, both have very high traffic uh, instances. JD is the largest uh, Chinese retailer, which means that it is the largest online retailer in the world. And Slack, uh, as most of you know, is a collaboration tool that is serving many, many large enterprises. Some of the Vitus users run it uh, on their own hardware. Many of them run it in the cloud and some of them run it in Kubernetes. And Vitus can run in any of those configurations. <laughs> Let's cover a few key concepts uh, in Vitus. The first one is key space. In a traditional database uh, architecture, people usually have a monolithic database. In Vitesse, you break that monolithic database into segments, each of which is called a key space. And um, a key space can itself consist of multiple individual databases, but it is a logical database. And a Vitesse cluster can contain multiple key spaces. So multiple logical databases, each of which may contain more than one physical database. Uh, the next concept we should understand is that of shard. A shard is uh, pretty much the sm a smaller component of key space. So 
key space, if you think of it as a logical database, a shard is the way you split up tables in that logical database across individual MySQL instances in order to get the scalability that uh, people are looking for. Wittes all depends on uh, a topology server, a distributed key value store that serves as a central uh, location for Wittes components to discover each other. Let's look at the Wittes architecture. In this picture, we are showing N shards and all of these shards together comprise a key space or a logical database. And it consists of multiple physical databases. And for each of those physical databases, we run a component called a VT tablet, which takes over the management of those physical databases in terms of doing backup restores and uh, providing protection against um, unanticipated queries that might overload the database and things like that. Traffic to the Wittes cluster is routed through uh, another component called VTGate. This serves as a gateway to the cluster and applications talk to VTGate, which then decides where to route individual queries. VTGate speaks the MySQL protocol, which means that applications can interact with it as if it were a single MySQL instance and it provides the logical uh, single database view that Wittes gives you across uh, the shards. There is also a control component called VTCTLD, and this is a, a daemon process that uh, can be used to manage the cluster and serves as an entry point to various cluster management functions. Next up, we will uh, show you demos of some interesting things, features, new or otherwise in Vitus. We'll start with uh, showcasing the MySQL compatibility and then move on to vReplication, online schema changes, and automatic failovers. Hi, this is Harshit and Andres, and we want to talk to you about MySQL compatibility. We believe that the test provides a valuable illusion for its users. It's the illusion of a single database when in reality, your data might be spread out across multiple replication clusters. It's the illusion of working directly with MySQL Find 7 when in reality, you're connected to a Go service. Finally, the test makes it seem like you have a dedicated connection to your database when in reality, your queries are being sent through a connection pool and where two queries can end up on different servers. This illusion has to work with many different systems. It has to convince your connection libraries that you use to connect directly to your database to send your queries. These libraries often send some preamble and follow-up queries and expect them to answer in very specific ways. It has to work with object, object relational mappers, tools that translate from the objects and structs you're, work, you're working with in your host language to complicated sweet SQL queries that the test has to be able to understand and run. We also want your old code to work with the test, not just the new projects. Forcing our users to have to change old SQL queries is not a good idea if we want happy users. Lastly, we want you to be able to use an application that works well with MySQL and make it scale by placing the tests in front of MySQL. When we started working with this project in last spring, we quickly picked WordPress as the thing that we were aiming to support. Here we are. We have our newly installed MySQL cluster, and we have a Vitesse in front of it. And we are configuring WordPress to talk first directly to the backing MySQL cluster. We have installed it. We now are able to um, just write a little blurb in a new blog post about the up and coming Vitesse 8.0 release. Here's the blog post published. And we can see here in the status page for VTGate that no queries are coming in. If we now change the connection port, so instead of talking with the backing MySQL, we talk with the test. We go back to the WordPress admin page. 
here we can see that queries are starting to trickle in. We can list existing pages. And it seems to work pretty seamlessly. Now I want to talk about what the test does behind the scene to create this illusion. Here I had a, a setup where the top pane shows the queries I'm executing against the test. And in the bottom pane, you can see the queries being received by the DT gate and the queries that DT gate sends to the tablet. Now, if we're dealing with a lot of data, we don't want to see all of it in one go. So we're going to use limits. That's going to show us the data, but if you're showing a lot of data and you want to provide pagination, you want to know what the full number would be. SQL Calc found those does that. It provides the data with the limit, but it returns found rows as if you had run the query without the limit. To implement this, what we had to do was to store this value in the DT gate session. So when we evaluate the found rows, we never send anything to the tablet, which might be an entirely different tablet, so we wouldn't have this information anyway. The last piece of the illusion that I want to show here is user-defined variables. This is something that lives in the session states on MySQL, and because we can't trust which MySQL will end up in, we had to do the same thing. Copy these values into the session state at the VT gate level and provide it to the tablet when necessary, or evaluate directly when we can. Here's an example of us having to send down the information in form of a parameterized query to the tablet. Hello. In this short demo, we go over a migration workflow early adopters often use to try with tests in production. We show how to move tables from your existing setup to serve them using Vites with vReplication's move tables workflow. Then we see how easy it is to roll back to your existing setup. Let's get to the demo. So this is the data we have in our current server. We first start all the Vites components that are needed, uh, the topology, VDCTLD, and VTGate. Now we start the unmanaged uh, tablet, which is just a tablet proxy, which points to the existing database server. Once that is done, we start the Vitus cluster. You have three tables which are uh, in your database. We start uh, three tablets. One we deem as the master, the other replica, and the third is the VM. Tablets have started. We have uh, 200 is the master. And now we can initiate the V replication workflow called Move Tables, which lets you move a uh, number of tables from a source. So, commerce is what we uh, called the existing database, that's the key space. Customer was the uh, new Vitus cluster. And we copied over customer and C order from commerce to customer. You can see here the VDIF command shows you that uh, all the tables have been copied. It's a very small table, so it's happened really quickly. And uh, you can look at the metadata of vReplication. It shows you the, uh, which position it's running at. It's syncing currently from commerce to customer. At this point, your existing database is still uh, contains all the data. Uh, it's where the app is pointing to. And you can see when you insert into the uh, your existing database, it gets synced, and uh, the target still has the new row that you uh, 
created. Now we start switching over to the ubiquitous cluster. We switch reads or read only and replica. And then finally, we switch over the writes, at which case all traffic from your app is going to the Vitus cluster. Note that we are still running a reverse replication at this point when we switch writes, keeping your original existing database server in sync with the Vitus cluster. We can look, the, look at this by looking at the reverse workflow that is automatically created by Vitesse. And you can see that uh, the position is in sync. We insert some rows into the target, which is the Vitesse cluster. And you will see that the replication, the reverse replication has kept it in sync. The GTIDs will increase by 10, which is the number of rows that we inserted through VTGate, five in C order and five in customer. So which means your existing server has all the data and you can switch back to it at any point. Let's initiate the switch back. So to do this, to switch back, we do the reverse, we switch reads back to your existing database, and then we switch writes, in which case now the app is pointing to your existing database, which is cluster is just there in the background. It is still, the forward replication is still running. So if you, uh, the app is now inserting data into the existing database, the Vitus cluster still is kept in sync. We see that here. We insert a row into your existing server and then we confirm uh, that our target has moved forward. That is the Vitus cluster is in sync. V replication can also be used for applications such as flexible resharding, change data capture, materialized views, anonymization, and aggregation. It has proven itself at scale in several massive high performance production setups with huge databases serving very high QPS. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shlomi Noach. I'm an engineer with PlanetScale, and today I'd like to present Online DDL, a new experimental feature in Vitesse 8.0, which comes to solve the issue of schema migrations and of the fact that an alt table in large busy systems takes the power out of the developer's hands. With MySQL on large and busy systems, an alt table is a risky operation. It is blocking, if not on the primary, then on the replicas. It will create replication lag. It is resource ready. It can consume so much IO that your environment is unable to serve production traffic. It is unauditable and uninterruptible. You can't expect to know what the status is or hit control C and expect things to just come back the way they were. Workarounds exist in the form of external tools like Ghost, PT Online Schema Change, or Facebook's online, ch online schema change. These are tools that, rec that require operational knowledge from the engineer. They need to run in, a, in the production environment. They need to know, they need to get uh, uh, the identities of the affected service. They need service discovery. They can do throttling, but they need to understand how to do throttling, which service to throttle by, what is the environment, what does the environment look like? So, the usage of these tools, although popular, requires an operational domain, an operational domain knowledge that uh, some engineers do not have, and therefore the engineers need to relay the uh, schema migration operation into the hands of VBAs, who will most commonly run these migrations manually. This situation is undesired, and this is why Vitesse is happy to present a new syntax for online DDL, an alter with ghost table, alter with PD online schema change table, putting the power back into the developer's hands and abstracting away all of the complexity of running schema migrations. Let's look at a quick demo. 
For starters, we're now logged in uh, into Vitesse. We have this simple table called eggs. It's populated with a few rows. It's actually on a sharded environment with four shards. But when I select from the table, it makes the appearance of just a normal monolithic table. I'm going to begin with the normal alter table. Uh, that's a blocking operation. In production, I wouldn't run that. That could take minutes, hours, or days to run. But, of course, here on this uh, very small table, it returns instantly. Already we see that Vitesse uh, is very useful to us here because it abstracts away the need to know what are the affected shards. How many shards are there for this table? Who are the primary servers for these tables? This is something that Vitesse already is aware of and abstracts away. But again, this schema migration is blocking. And therefore we introduce this new syntax, alter with go stable x, modify int, etc, etc. And the first thing we note is that we get back this job description, job ID, which we will use later on to track. We'll be able to use this value to control the migration, audit the migration, cancel it or retry it. Now the next thing we see is that the table has not yet been migrated. That's because uh, um, this operation goes asynchronous and offline. Vitesse becomes the owner of the scheduling of this migration. In fact, every shard in itself owns the scheduling of the migration. It can uh, take place in the next minute or in the next hour, depending on whether there's other running migrations. At long last, we will see that the migration is uh, success uh, successful. We can see that the schema change has been altered. Of course, uh, tracking the progress of a migration by show create table, show create table is undesired, and Vitesse offers us an interface to look into the status of running migrations. The same interface allows us to control, cancel, throttle, uh, and terminate uh, or retry uh, running migrations. There's a lot more to this and uh, please look at the documentation and release notes for Vitesse 8.0. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. I'm going to give you a very quick demo of uh, the orchestrator, uh, which is actually a new component of uh, Vitesse. Vitesse has previously had what we call as planned failovers, which means that if you plan to deploy software or if a pod goes down and it gets an event, Vitesse automatically performs failovers where it uh, changes the current master and fails over and promotes another replica as the new master. Uh, but operating Vitesse in that level won't give you this huge high availability that people get with it. Usually what they do for that is they integrate a New, another component called the Orchestrator, uh, authored by Shlomi Noach, which is a popular tool for MySQL. And Vitesse works uh, as an external integration with that or Orchestrator. What we have now done is uh, forked that, uh, that Orchestrator and made it a core component of Vitesse, which means that this new Orchestrator called VTORC uh, actually works hand in hand with the Vitesse topology, can understand all those components and therefore the integration is tighter and a lot smoother. Okay. So here I'm going to give you an example of that orchestrator and the things it can do. So I have a cluster here, which is a single, uh, which is an uncharted uh, key space. And in this key space, I have a master and uh, four replicas of which one is uh, not an eligible uh, master. And uh, now that I have, uh, now that um, I've also brought up the orchestrator, which is running and the orchestrator also has the same view of the topology, except it actually has a better UI. Uh, you can see that it's now beautifully graphically rep um, represented and shows how things are uh, connected. But the, what you can do here, for example, is I can go to Vitesse and say, do a planned reparent, which is failover from uh, the master from 100 to, let us say, 101. Okay? So I say, do a reparent. So as soon as you do a reparent, then uh, what um, Vitesse has done, it has performed the failover. But uh, as soon as it does a failover, the orchestrator notices that it has happened and adjusts itself saying that, see, 
uh, now 111 is the new master. So they are both in agreement. But you could also go to the orchestrator and say, hey, you do the failover for me instead of asking VTCTLD to do it. And that can also happen. Like, for example, I'll say, promote 17101 as the master. And the orchestrator is a nice drag and drop UI. You can say, hey, do you really want to make 101 the master? Yes, I want to make 101 the master. And the orchestrator performs that act. And if you go look at the test, it actually should have updated itself to 101. And the orchestrator will soon refresh its screen to show that it is the case. But what can orchestrator do is if MySQL crashes underneath, it can actually detect it and proactively perform failover. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring down 101 to show you, which is my, uh, my DOM 101. So as soon as I go down, you will see that this is the log of uh, the orchestrator. After a few seconds, it will notice that uh, something is off and it says, okay, I'm going to perform some functions. These are, I'm, I'm running it in my post mode. But if you refresh here, uh, 101 was the previous master. And now if you see, it says, hey, I have now promoted 100 as a master because 101 is down. What I can now do is go back and bring that 101. I'm still waiting for the shutdown to finish. And if you see here, do the refresh, you should see that 100 is now the master. Uh, 101 is actually down. If I click on the status, it'll say it is down. So now I'm going to bring back 101. And as soon as I bring up 101, I can go to orchestrator. It'll say, hey, 101 is back up and it looks like everything is fine. I'm going to now point it back at the new master. So the way orchestrator works is it, work, it works in this thing called the desired state. Any component is not in the correct state, it goes and fixes it. So it makes this entire cluster self-healing, uh, even, even, and, but then it's beyond just looking at the state, it's also looking at whether something is able to serve traffic or not. Uh, this component of orchestrator will soon be available as a uh, operator component. Uh, so in the operator, there is actually this pull request, which should be submitted by the time you see this video. Uh, if not, it is pull request number 130, and you should be able to build off of this OC1 initial branch. And once it is there, you should be able to use the new Vitesse uh, operator to deploy this orchestrator. And there is a sample YAML that I've submitted here which will, there is a sample YAML, which is under uh, example, the under the operator example, but it's called orc cluster.yaml. And you can look at it to see uh, this section, which is the Vitesse orchestrator. And that should show you how to set up the orchestrator for your cluster. Thank you very much. We, we invite you to uh, visit us on the web at the website, vitesse.io where you can learn more about Vitus. Do join us on Slack. We have a very vibrant and welcoming Slack community. You can also find us on GitHub or uh, talk to us via Twitter. And we'll take questions next. <laughs>